Hey guys, Brian Holder here, Brian Holder Graphic Design. Got another WYSIWYG Web Builder 8 video for you. And today I'm going to answer a question from Nick Jones, and it's about uh, about fonts. So what he says is, hey Brian, when choosing your font, you have quite a lot, not just the basic ones. How'd you get all those? Um, so this question can actually be kind of taken in two different directions. Um, I'm not sure if he means, how did I get all of those listed in the WYSIWYG program because I know that with the default program uh, with a fresh install you only get the web safe fonts listed so you'll have a list of like maybe 20 of them or something like that um, but in my video here when, when I select the font you can see that I have several probably a hundred or more installed or um, the other way that we can address this question is you know, how, how did you find all of those fonts? Where did you get them from? So we're going to go through both of those uh, situations here. So first of all, how did I get all of those fonts? Well, I, uh, I acquired them through free uh, font websites such as this. This is dafont.com. It's D-A-F-O-N-T.com. Uh, they have probably thousands of free. As a matter of fact, here we go. Yeah, 20,180 fonts. Um, that's crazy, right? So what they've done is you have a search here. So if you have a very specific font you're looking for, you can search for the name of it. Or you have everything broken down into these nice uh, categories and subcategories. You can search for a font this way. What I really like about this, excuse me, this website is that let's say we narrow this down. We know that we want to go with a sans serif basic font. Uh, we can type in the term that we want to uh, render. So let's say we're looking for a logo and the name of the logo is logo type, right? So let's just put that in. Uh, I'm going to choose that I want to display 50 fonts per page. Medium size is fine. Oop. And then you hit submit for your search and look what it does. It puts in that phrase right in there. So now you can see what that logo is going to look like basically you know basically you know as you as you search for the font okay so you know between these free websites the font is one of them there's a couple of them font space i think maybe one that i remember uh 1001freefonts.com um you know and i also had clients who would provide me with font files occasionally when uh, they had work that they needed me to do but i didn't have their their custom font or their their uh, commercial font that they paid for, they would send me the files. Um, so it's just stuff I've collected over the years. That's how I got those built up. Now, let's address the other question. How do you get those to show up in the WYSIWYG program? Well, I can't uh, really remember exactly how I did it, um, but I know it was very simple. And I think what it was is that when I selected some text, I'm trying to select the text now, but I'm just thinking I hate these goddamn mouse pads with the um, multi touch or whatever the hell they call that crap. Uh, let me fix my zoom here because I accidentally zoomed in a little bit. The gesture, yeah, the gesture pads. It's annoying. All right, so when we select some text, I'm fairly certain that with this drop down here, um, there was an option to display non-web safe fonts and I selected that option. I, I tried to, to restore this back to the way it was when I first installed it but I couldn't uh, without uninstalling and reinstalling it which I didn't want to do. So uh, check to see if there's there's an option to display non-web safe fonts. Okay now with that being said you want to be extremely careful about what fonts you use because if you're using a font that you've downloaded, especially one from like a free website, um, you know, odds are that whoever visits your site is not going to have that font installed on their machine. So they're not going to get to see what you see. They're going to see some kind of basic font like Courier or Times Roman or whatever their default browser font is. Um, so where you are safe is if you uh, embed a custom font into an object. Um, such as a shape. So let's drag out a shape real quick here. And if I take this shape and I use the text tab and I type in something, I can use my custom font. No sweat. 
because what happens is that before you even send this font to the browser, before, like when you upload, um, what is going to happen internally inside the program is that it's going to take this font and convert it to an image. And then that image is what gets uploaded to the browser. So when the user goes to view this shape, they're not going to be seeing the font technically, quote unquote. They're going to be seeing the shape with this image in it. It's, it's a picture, not a, not a text. So that's one way to get away with it. And, and you'll notice that um, some of my, uh, on my website, some of my social, you know what, not on this one, but I do have a social icon font, okay? And that's how I do it is that I, I use the font inside a shape. That way everybody can see it. Um, so now with the Google fonts, there is an update to this since my last Google font uh, video, which uh, if you haven't seen that, you may want to take a look at it, but we're going to update it right now. Um, so basically what used to happen was that you'd have to install the font in your website and you wouldn't really be able to see it in the program until you published your page and viewed it uh, through a browser. Then you can see your custom font. But since that video was recorded google has added this little feature where you can actually download and install this web font on your local machine so now that you can do that that kind of changes the way that, that this works so for instance i'm going to show you real quick how i did it with my website so i'm using a font called rawway and it's right here so what we would do is add this to our collection and click on use for my previous video, I told you that you needed to grab this, right? That is still true. This is what this little piece of code does is this installs that font temporarily on whoever is using your website on their computer. It goes into their temporary internet uh, files. So you still need to copy that, okay? And then from your WYSIWYG program, you go to page site html and you're going to paste that little bit of code between the head tags right and that's what you see right here now what you can do next to make this easier for yourself go back to the google page and download that font right here and if you install that font on your local machine what that allows you to do within the program is just select the font up here like you normally would with any other any other font and then you can also do that within the style manager so just to give you an example if we go here my h1 click on edit instead of having to paste that code remember before we pasted a little bit of code here in custom styles we can just instead of doing that we can just select the font from our drop down here okay um, and that'll work as long as you've pasted that little code snippet into your site HTML you can do that and it'll render just fine so hopefully this video helped hopefully it answered your question if it didn't get back to me let me know I'll, I'll do my best to try and answer it again and hopefully this clears up a little bit of the font uh, questions that, that are coming in uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up I love seeing those and it makes me want to do more of these videos for you leave a comment if you have a question and if you like my videos, subscribe because I'm, I'm coming out with a whole bunch of them. I got a nice big list that I'm working on. I'm going to try to crank out a couple today and get them in the queue to be uploaded. Uh, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks.